In this screencast, we are going to cover the order of operations. It's really important that you know the order of operations and what Excel is calculating first is very similar to programming calculators if you've used those. We're going to talk about how you can put expressions into cells in VBA, so formulas in Excel, and the syntax. Before I go over this, I wanted to show you in Excel something that is quite different from other programming languages and uh, things that your programming calculators do. So let's go ahead and put into a cell here equals negative 3 caret 2. It's 9. So this, if you plug this into programming calculators or most programs, negative 3 caret 2, the exponentiation, the, that's what the caret is, comes first. Most computer programs and calculators will do 3 squared, which is 9, and then negate it. But Excel is a little bit different. The first thing that Excel does is negation, and then exponentiation, followed by multiplication, division, and then addition and subtraction. Formulas are evaluated left to right. Functions in Excel syntax are actually evaluated first. So if you have a function in your formula, that's going to be evaluated first. And then formulas are evaluated left to right in the proper order of operations as shown up here. And finally, if you need to force the order of operations, then you can use parentheses and you use parentheses to group calculations. So I've got an example here. We have an algebraic expression and we need to put this into Excel syntax. So the denominator here obviously has to be grouped. So we're going to force that grouping using parentheses. So I've got two cells here, one for X and one for Y. I'm going to name these by selecting those cells and creating from selection. So now B6 is named X and B7 is named Y. So I'm going to put this expression into cell B9. Again, we need to force the grouping on the denominator. So we need to put that in parentheses. I'm going to start with the numerator. So we can multiply y plus 2 by x minus 2. And then I'm going to divide by the denominator. Now if I just started writing x squared plus x times y, there's an error there because I'm only dividing y plus 2 times x minus 2 by x squared and not the entire denominator. Instead, what we need to do is we need to put parentheses around the entire denominator. So this is what it ends up being y plus 2 times x minus 2. We do the forward slash to denote division. The caret here de denotes exponentiation. So we have x squared plus x times y. The asterisk denotes multiplication plus the square root. That's a built-in Excel function. You'll learn a lot more about these built-in Excel functions in a subsequent screencast. So we take the square root of y. You could also use y to the 1 half power if you'd like. So when we press enter, we get the result. So the Excel syntax for this is shown here, and we just did that in Excel. I wanted to sort of go through how Excel does this. Remember that functions are evaluated first. So Excel places y into the square root function. It returns an answer to that position. Then it computes the y plus 2 result. So remember, it evaluates left to right. So in our Excel formula here, it evaluates the y plus 2 first because that's sort of in parentheses. Then Excel computes the x minus 2 result. It multiplies the y plus 2 result times the x minus 2 result to get a numerator result. And then it computes x squared. It computes the x times y. And then it adds up the x squared x times y and the square root to get a denominator result. And then finally it divides the numerator result by the denominator result to get an answer. So let's practice a few examples here. We have pi d squared over 4 times l. If you want to pause this and think of this yourself, how you would write this assuming that d and l are already defined, then you can go ahead and pause. So the correct answer to this is we can use the built-in function pi You'll learn that and more in a subsequent screencast. And then we multiply that by d squared and divide by 4 times l. 4 times l is in parentheses because that's a denominator result. Or you can do the same thing, but you can divide by 4, take that result, because that'll be its own separate result, 
and divide by L. Remember, Excel goes left to right. Another example, T minus TL over A times TH minus TL. In Excel, that would look like this. We could take the T minus TL, divide by quantity A times TH minus TL, or you could kind of do the same thing as we did above, where you can take the numerator, divide by A to get a result, and then take that result and divide by TH minus TL. So both of those would work for this situation. Got another example here. The Excel syntax would look something like this. Now there's an error in here. See if you can catch it. We don't have the asterisk there, multiplying the H squared times the three times radius minus H. The sine of 45 degrees. Now be careful because if you wanna take the sine of 45 degrees, you have to remember, and you'll learn about this in subsequent screencasts, that when you're trying to use these trig functions, the operator or the argument inside is in radians. So um, if you're trying to take the sine of 45 degrees, you have to make sure that that argument is in radians, or you can convert degrees to radians by, by using this conversion. 